Good morning, everybody. It's Christina Dennis, the Transformational Self Empowerment Master. And it is Friday, and probably uh, the beginning, the end of one part of your life if you're a worker that works Monday through Friday outside of the home, and the beginning of a new part, the weekend. And uh, those tend to be very different for me. I, I do a lot of things on the weekends that keep me incredibly busy, and my quiet days are Monday and Tuesday. And so, I was thinking about the last four days and everything that I was trying to convey in regards to being able to change your mind and uh, change your nervous system and that that your nervous system is really a representation of information to you and negative bias and why we're built like that. Um, and I wanted to kind of tie it back to uh, the things that are near and dear to my heart, which is trauma work and uh, why. Um, you know, just thinking positive thoughts, although really a nice start and a beginning is not going to be the end of, um, it's not the, the cure-all. And I think a lot of us know that. That's why there's some snickering. I mean, I've seen some, you know, funny, funny memes like, you know, uh, your motivational quote today, today your hair is much better than it was when you were in junior high. And those kinds of things make me laugh because when I had, um, uh, no way of taming my hair in junior high. And I had a Lady Diana haircut. That's the age, I think it was in fifth grade um, or maybe fourth grade. I'm not sure exactly, but when she got married and uh, sure enough, you know, I had the haircut. Um, I had dry, straight hair. And then when I went through puberty, it became incredibly curly. And my high school nickname was Poof. Um, and gosh, did I carry a lot of shame about my hair? And I, I was listening to someone um, talk yesterday who's done a lot of work, and I wish I could remember her name right now. And if I, if I get back to this subject, I'll bring it back up again. And she was talking about natural hair. She is a black girl, and she is, a, I mean, she's a black woman at this point, but she had such a youthful um, pre representation and uh, presented a lot of information about different cultures, and she was really able to discuss it. Um, you know, from a point of hair, and I re I related completely because I, my hair was atrocious, and I, it still has a life of its own. And you'll hear me talk about it a lot. Um, it's like one of my biggest assets, you know, to have full thick hair, and it's also one of the things that drove me crazy <laughs> my entire adult life and prior to that. So, sidestep. Uh, I wanted to talk about. Uh, trauma work and why uh, thinking positive thoughts around it or shortcutting um, the process of healing is not helpful. Um, and it only takes us a little further, you know, around what the quickest way is through grief is through grief. And I may have shared this already, I may not have, but someone um, who I was listening to talked about, oh, it was Marianne Williamson, talked about buffaloes um, and that if the buffalo knows there's a snowstorm coming, they go straight into it. They walk toward it because they know the quickest way, the safest way to get through it is right into it. And, you know, I didn't do that, obviously, as a child. It wasn't safe. I couldn't go through storms. And sometimes I had to fight back. And I certainly had to go outside of my uh, immediate family to get that um that reinforcement to get things that served me. I often say I was lucky because, you know, the scarcity of love and safety in my own home made it impossible for me to keep trying to get something from them. And probably around the age of 11, 12, I stopped even giving them my report card because it didn't matter to them. And, um, uh, started looking for my reinforcements outside of my immediate home. And, you know, that was a thing that saved my life and it allowed me to gain skills that kept me going. But when I went that route, um, I stayed alive. I, I had successes. I gained, um, you know, I was able to move on some talents of mine, some natural ability. I also picked, you know, my first relationship uh, with somebody who, absolutely was narcissistic in his mannerisms and um, boy did I learn a lot from that relationship and um, if I hadn't drank alcoholically I'm not sure I would have left it at that point it was consuming me um, but I did and 
through my sobriety, my search for sobriety, I started having to deal with the trauma of growing up in the home that I'd grown up with, the abuse that I had suffered, you know, which spans all the abuses that you think about, abandonment, sexual, um, overt and covert, uh, you know, mental abuse, physical abuse, they were all there. And how did I move from that to, um, you know, at 16, finding out my parents were really my grandparents and that my older sister was really my mom. And there was all this secrecy and deceit. And how did I get through that so that I didn't have, uh, I didn't allow it to take me out? Um, I always say I'm grateful I found alcohol when I did because that six years uh, from 21 to 27 were really difficult years for me. And I had to, I had that valve. You know, I was in that relationship at that time. We were running restaurants. It was a scene. It was exhausting, but it's what kept me alive. And I know that. So I don't regret it. Uh, and then when I was able to find a 12 step group that could support my needs and I was looking at people that didn't look like um, the church people that had judged me um, or my grandmother who had used the Bible to punish me, it looked like people who really reflected God's love back. And um, I started seeking that truth and started moving toward that. Didn't give me any shortcuts though when it came to feeling the pain that I hadn't been able to feel as a child because it wouldn't have been safe, that I had ran from in my 20s, and I had to feel that pain. So when I talk about retraining your brain, I still believe wholeheartedly that there needs to be a release of trauma. Um, and there are all kinds of different ways to do that. And if you are somebody who has survived trauma, um, one of the first things I say is get a group of people around you who also survived trauma. Um, because having people that understand your language or recognize or don't go, oh, or you know, any of the reactions that we would have naturally when somebody tells something really difficult um, is imperative. Professional help, imperative. Um, knowing that this pain that you're going to feel is going to put you in a position to be a better parent, to change the cycle, to end the violence, to, um, you know, to have love that you never expected to have. So it's worth it. It's totally worth it. But it sure feels like, um, like it's going to kill you. And when I work with people who are going through it, and it's the first couple of times that we're talking about some of these things and we're challenging belief systems and trying to um, go through and kind of figure out all the misconceptions that we picked up as children um, and we stop, you know, having people in our lives that continue those kinds of messages. Um, it feels really awful at first, but it's worth it. And when I work with people, I, you know, will say, uh, I, I can't feel it for you. I, I wish I could. All I can tell you is that you'll live through it and it's worth it. And the quickest way is through it. And so when I talk about mindfulness and thinking positive thoughts and these relationships techniques that have now brought really loving people into my life, I don't say it in a matter of, you know, you, you can just avoid and shortcut. A lot of us want to go ahead and push to the forgiveness stage um, because we don't want to feel the anger. Nobody wants to feel anger. Anger feels awful inside the body. And, um, we push through to the forgiveness as a way of, you know, I understand they did the best they could. All these are statements that we use that we've learned in order to uh, kind of sidestep the truth. And um, I don't know any other way around it. This is the way I had to do it. It's the way a lot of people that I have worked with and been lucky enough to walk um, by side by side in life have to do it. And Different stages of life bring up different depths and different awarenesses. So that's why you can do some family of origin work in your 20s and then go back and do it in your 30s and go back and do it in your 40s and go back and do it in your 50s and so on that will look different each time. And I'm totally guilty of thinking, haven't I done enough of this? I remember going to a therapist once and saying, and I loved what she said. I said, I really don't want to talk about my relationship anymore. Um, can we just focus on me? And she, and she's like, that's how I find out about you. <laughs> it's your relationship, sweetie. And so we're going to talk about it because that's where the truth is. That's, 
You know, that is where we show up in our worst states and our best states. And so when you have these strong relationships, these child relationships, these adult child relationships that have been broken, um, and I'm not even going to measure degrees because who am I to say that your pain is different than my pain or I've been through it worse or you've been through it worse. I don't know. But when you have that, then wow, is that not a roadmap to what you have uh, learned and what we can now uh, adjust and revamp and move on from. So I wanted to make that clear uh, today uh, that if you are in a place of trauma and you've listened to my videos the last three days and you think, okay, now I know I have negative um, you know, bias and I can sit you know, for at least 20 seconds with a good thought and start building that, all that will help, absolutely. But it will not take the place of, of really good work. And for me, I wanted to be who I was because I knew what it felt like to feel that if I showed the world who I really was and all of the uh, insecurities I have and the imperfections and how bad I felt a lot of times and how sad I was still, that they would run away. And so I lived a life in recovery based on performance and fueled by terror and uh, performance to uh, behave in the way that I thought you wanted me to. Therefore, never feeling like anybody really loved me or knew me. So. We are all perfectly imperfect. I could say a million things like that. And if you're in that place where it hurts, all of them will sound like bullshit. And uh, I'm okay with that too. It's all right to say that sounds like bullshit. And I'm mad and feel that feeling and express that to someone. Because if you don't show up and you don't give yourself that permission, your children don't get that permission, your relationships don't get to be as deep as they, they could be, and you continue the abuse for yourself um, that could end years and years and years, uh, that should have ended years and years and years ago. You continue to bring that into your current life, and I don't want that for anyone. So um, that's why I'm here, to talk about that stuff that isn't so pretty and shiny, and to say it's okay, and it's really where the beauty of life is. So I hope you guys have, you ladies and men, I think usually Kelly's the only man who watches this, but anybody else who happens to get on board, um, I hope that you take the day to really look at yourself and to create some agency and think about the thoughts that you're having and know that it's perfectly okay to have those thoughts and then move into action about healing. So have a great day and I will come in tomorrow and I'm not sure what I'm going to talk about, but it'll be a new day. Talk to you later. Bye.